Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 89. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at, at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. And TidyX is on Twitter at, at Tidy underscore explained, as well as on Gmail at tidy.explained at gmail.com. You can open an issue on the GitHub repo. You can go on to YouTube, like and subscribe, drop a comment in there. We'll be sure to get back to you. If you enjoy the work that we're doing, we enjoy doing it. And if you'd like to support us, uh, we do have a Patreon page where um, if you feel comfortable, you could uh, you know, buy us a beer or buy us a coffee, and, and we would appreciate that as well. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so this week we are reaching into our mailbag to do a uh, answer a couple questions that we received from one of our viewers. So we do look at these. We do appreciate getting any any like feedback from you all, what you like, what you don't like, what you want us to do in the future, because uh, we want to make sure the content we create is stuff that you are interested in and will help you continue to do your job. Um, or do things for fun. I don't know. I don't judge. <laughs> I do it for Either fun, way. clearly. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so we reached in and we got a question related to how they could take a um, an output from a model, uh, the like uh, the summary statistics from a model, and make that into a table. Patrick, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Is yeah, I'll share the uh, screen. Yeah. Specifically, it was how to make it into a table for research, and different journals have different. Uh, you know, parameters and, and guardrails around this stuff. So you always have to check what their styling guides, um, uh, you know, suggest that they'd like. But um, we've done some stuff with GT tables in the past. In episode 47, we did a whole win probabilities model for NHL and built a fun GT table with, you know, conditional formatting and, and all the bells and whistles, uh, which obviously, it, you know, for most journals is not going to fly. Journals tend to want things pretty... Um, it's pretty specific, pretty block and tackle, so to speak, and, and pretty clean. So we're going to uh, build a just a simple regression model and kind of show you how you can take that and turn it into a, um, a table that would then be able to be submitted to a journal with along with obviously your research paper. Uh, and then we'll go through a, uh, you know, a, a plot that does a few things that we haven't uh, we haven't really done before. The plot type isn't really new, but um, there's a few little things that we haven't really done before. So a little fun yeah. tweaks. Yeah. All right. So let's just get let's get this thing going. Let me zoom in a little bit so you all can see the code that we'll be using here. All right. So as always, we have the packages we're going to be using at the very top here. So we're using Tidyverse for all our data manipulation needs. The library Broom, which uh, is for cleaning up output or model outputs and making it really nice. And then GT because we want to make a, a nice table with GT. Table, yeah. uh, we're going to set our theme to be theme BW using the theme set uh, function. So that is now set. So any GG plot plots that we make will be using the BW theme by default, and then we can edit from there. Uh, right. The data set that we're going to be using this week is we're trying to use one that um, is fairly common for everybody to use, so you can do this yourself. Uh, so we use the empty cars data set, which is a data set from the motor um, motor times or something like that. That seems yeah. wrong, but it, motor trends, cool, motor trends. Yeah, and it's a cool data set for just simple projects that if you're trying to like work through how could I visualize things, how could I create you know files and, and reports and things because it has uh, a whole bunch of different data types there's continuous data there's categorical data that you'd want to dummy code there's binary data like vs and am which we'll use um, so there's lots of different kind of options to to play with so it is kind of a nice uh, data set for things like that exactly so we're going to take empty cars we're going to throw it into our mutate because we want to convert our vs which stands for v or straight so that is the engine configuration in models. So you can have a V, so the cylinders are in a V, or they're straight, so they're all in a straight line. Um, and we're gonna mutate them and then call it uh, DF. So we can take a quick head of that. It really functionally doesn't look any different, but this is for our model, because we yeah. don't want these to be seen as numeric values. Yeah, the only difference is, yeah, VS is basically, if, if we were to run a tibble on this, we'd see that it's a, a factor. Yep. All right, so now we're gonna fit our model. It's going to we're gonna be using the LM function from base or from the stats package that comes with R. So we're gonna take DF, we're gonna pipe it into LM. The formula we're gonna use is the MPG. So we're saying predict MPG based on number of cylinders, the weight, 
and as factor am we could have made that one in in the mutate as well the as factor exactly i don't know why uh, we just chose to do it this way yeah, That's fine. yeah. either way it works <laughs> yeah so we're now we're going to fit that that fits pretty quick because it's an lm model and this yeah. is the output that we get when we run fit so yeah. the by default we'd expect most or all the cars to have an average of 39 mpg for every additional cylinder it's a minus 1.5 for every pound pound I think it's in pounds. I believe it is tons. Uh, tons. Yeah, yeah, Seems that's not pounds. Like <laughs> it's um, a three, three, three and a half pound car. Yeah, uh, uh, it's got to be in tons, probably. Yeah, weight by thousand yeah, pounds. By thousand pounds. Oh, there you go. Okay. And then um, the AM, which stands for automatic or manual. So if it is a type. manual, you actually are expected to get 0. 0.17 additional MPG. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, so, yeah. so this is, once again, don't use this to make uh, decisions with your car, obviously. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to take this fit model and now we're going to actually produce the table that we would submit as with our report or whatnot. Patrick, do you want to take us through this? Yeah. So uh, again, we're going to use the GT package, which is pretty uh, handy dandy for these types of things. We're going to take our model. And the first thing we're going to do, we talked about this when we started with the tidy models is um, just using uh, this tidy function from the broom package. Uh, gives us a cool little cleanup. Obviously, if we did summary fit um, and we looked at the model output in the standard kind of R way, um, it's a bit cumbersome to work with if we want to turn that into a table. What we really want is that middle section there that says coefficients. And so tidy kind of yanks that out and uh, and it gives it to us in, in a nice kind of clean uh, looking way. So once we got that out, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. Um, so I'm going to mutate across. I want to I want to just round the values between estimate and statistic. I want to round those to two decimal places so that they're all kind of consistent and and um, and look the same. Yeah, because right now and there's then, a, like a variety. Like this one goes yeah. three three yeah. digits past zero. This one goes three digits. These yeah. like they're just kind of all over the place. So for just, a table, it's just it keep nice. some consistency. So that's uh, pretty much all the little bit of data cleaning that we're going to do. Um, and then we're going to uh, pipe this into a GT table. So literally, if we just ran this part up to GT, we'll get a very basic table. Um, nothing fancy. There it is. Uh, perfect. OK, great. So we're going to try and make this look nice. And the first thing that we're looking at there is that P value has so many digits. And we're just going to pipe in this um, uh, function that's from the GT package called format scientific because we're going to use scientific notation here to give exact p values. So we're going to round the first portion of that to two decimal places, and then uh, we see the scientific notation there. Um, so that helps it make uh, you know make it a little bit of a little bit cleaner. Okay, what else can we do if we were going to report this in a journal? Well, we're going to need to label the table because somewhere in our body of our paper. We're going to say the results of the model can be seen in table one. So um, this first part here is just going to put this at the bottom of the table. So we'll see we use tab source note. That's going to put it at the bottom. And the source note we're going to define, we're going to use this helper function called MD. Uh, there's a number of different helper functions. You could use HTML, things like that. We're going to use MD, which is uh, uh, markdown. And mm -hmm. um, that's going to uh, allow us to make this uh, uh, stylized in the way that we want it. So there we go. We're going to use the two little stars around table to bold the word table uh, because that's going to probably be how it looks in our paper. And then we're just going to give it a nice little um, uh, kind of note there that says linear regression model coefficients for predicting miles per gallon. Uh, now, some journals might want to have the table up at the top instead of at the bottom of the table. So they might want to have the header, uh, ha have a header on this that explains what the table is. So we actually commented that part out, but we can show you what it looks like right here. We use tab header for that. And again, it's the same uh, information that we're, is contained within the note. And we're going to align it left. So it's all basically to the left side. So this is if we wanted to put that table information at the top of the table, depending on how the journal likes to see this so there there's what it looks like there um but most of the time when i publish in journals table information goes at the bottom so we're going to go ahead and stick with that uh, now we're going to do a little bit of cleanup and kind of make it look nice so the first thing that i'd like to do 
is uh, with the calls label function uh, is exactly what it means. We're going to label the columns and we're going to take each column and we're actually just going to turn it into some kind of nicer names so that it just like looks like stuff that you might uh, read in a, in, a, in a paper. And instead of things like STD.error, we're going to change that to standard error. Instead of statistic, that's actually the, the T statistic, the T value. So we're going to put that there and we'll put P value in there. So now we're going to have these nice and bolded at the top of our, um, uh, at the top of our, yep, of our table. So perfect, starting to come along. And then we got a few other styling pieces and then we'll be pretty much all set. Um, I put in an option here for adding a footnote. Uh, there's really nothing in this model that we would need to footnote. Uh, but oftentimes when you see papers with, um, uh, you know, models, there's things that people put in the footnotes like, they sig you know they put like significant variables with a little star or something like that. So I wanted to show how you could put a footnote into a GT table. So here I just used tab footnote, and the footnote is basically going to say transmission zero equals automatic and one equals manual. That's what we know from the data, and the locations of that uh, footnote. The locations uh, argument here is basically saying um, which column and which rows we might want to put the footnote on. So for example, within the body of that table, we're going to say in that term column, which is uh, the, yep, the first column right there, which are the, uh, uh, the names of the variables within our model. We're going to put at row four, we're going to put this little, um, uh, this little uh, uh, footnote kind of thing that's basically going to pop up. And then at the bottom, right above where our table information is, it's going to drop a footnote in there that says transmission zero equals, uh, yeah, there it is, zero there equals go. automatic and one equals manual. So it gives a little little thing right there. little description of the variable that maybe yep. it would, doesn't make sense to fit it in this, this table here, but it's information to know. So yeah. by as factor AM1, it's telling you that for the transmission one, this is these are the coefficients the, the because coefficient is uh, by default, a yeah. uh, factor is kind of rolled into the intercept. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right, so nearly done. We're almost there. The last kind of things that I like to do is make sure that the um, header columns of the table kind of are, are, are blocked off um, and, and look like they're actual headers. So we're going to put some thicker black lines over top of them and uh, on the bottom and over the top. So for that, we use this uh, tab style function. And we pass this argument called style as a list. And we're going to say we want to address the cell borders. We'd love the sides. Basically, is it going to be right side, left side, top, bottom? We're going to do top first. We want the color of it to be black and the weight to be PX2. So we wanted it to be a little bit thicker than the default kind of straight line that you see there currently in the table. And the locations is basically telling us which columns over the top that we'd like this to go through. So for us, we want this to go across all of the columns. If we only wanted it, let's say we wanted to leave term alone and we wanted it to only go under the columns that have numeric data, we would just change that and we would indicate which columns that we wanted to go under. So we're gonna say, um, yeah, exactly. And you just do that and that's problem solved. Uh, but we're going to do it for everything. And we're going to do the same. We're basically just copy and pasting that bit of code right down into the next line here. We do the exact same thing, but this time we're saying bottom instead of top. And so now we have a table that we can uh, run. And if we kind of zoom or yeah, pull it, in, there we go. And so that looks like something that you might, you know, pop into your journal article. You could uh, hit export and you could actually copy and paste it out. If you wanted to, you could copy it to a clipboard and just paste it directly into your Word document that you're typing your paper in, or you could save it as an image. Sometimes journals um, prefer you to send any tables as a like a JPEG or, or something like that. You could si simply save it as an image and then send it along with your, um, with your submission to that journal. And that is a little bit on making tables for journals. There you go. Now it looks super nice. You can uh, export all your coefficients from all your various models. Do that and make them make them all nice and pretty to share out with with your with your team there. Okay, now we're gonna take uh, the same sort of information there, but rather than making a uh, a table there, maybe we want to make a plot to kind of just show a couple different things as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the same empty cars data set there. We're gonna also mutate to convert gear into a factor because it is actually a factor. It isn't um, like a continuous variable. 
for us, we're going to group by gear. So this is now going to, anything underneath this is going to be, or calculating this by groups of gear. Um, and we're actually going to quanti calculate quantiles for that. And so the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to use summarize. We're going to do create two new vectors, one quantile. So this is going to have a vector of low, median, and high and create an MPG column. And this is going to contain the output of the quantile function where you specify or you feed in a numeric vector and you specify the probabilities that you want out. And then it'll calculate the quantiles of the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, and the 75th percentile uh, output. So this will have a vector of three values labeled with quantile here. And then we're going to set for each gear. Yes, for each gear. Yeah. Um, across all of the empty cars. Mm -hmm. um, so where's gear? Gear's over here. So like the Mazda RX-4, RX-4 WAG, and 710, if we were only looking at these three, they'd all be under the gear four. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're going to set dot groups to drop because this is um, this has been a feature that's been around for probably about a year now or so in uh, deploy R, but it'll automatically drop the last uh, grouping variable and it'll give you a message saying it's doing that. We don't want that. So we're saying, no, it's okay. Just remove all the grouping after we're done with the summarize. So let's take a quick peek at what this looks like so you can understand. So for all the, in empty cars, all the records where gear is three, the low quantile for MPG is 14.5. The median is 15.5 and the high is 18.4. Um, so that is um, how you create this. But this isn't really easy to work with. And it's kind of hard to, to piece this all together. Um, so what we're going to mm -hmm. do next is throw it into a pivot wider. So it's going to then take this long data frame and make it wider. So pivot wider. Uh, the names that it's going to be using for the new columns it's going to be creating is from the quantile field. So that is the this column here, so low, median, and high. And the values that will be populating that are MPG. And so then it's going to use all the other rows, which is gear in this case, to figure out row. And so we can run this. Oh. Mm -hmm. Don't go too high. Mm -hmm. There we go. So now we've got this data frame where we have a column for gear, three, four, five the low, median, and high for the um, the the MPGs for these. Uh, Patrick, do you want to take us through the actual plot that we yeah. generate with this? Yeah, and, and also just uh, you just have to be uh, aware of what you're calling low and high. I mean, those can be misleading, right? They, those could be min and max values. In reality, maybe we, we should have called it like X25, X50, and X75, you know what I mean? Yeah, so something that like designates the quanta, but we know what it is for, for these purposes. Uh, for the plotting, we're gonna do a few. Uh, we're gonna use a few functions in, in ggplot that we haven't used before. So, uh, the first one is we're gonna just obviously set our aesthetic on the y variable. We're only setting a y variable here because we're gonna change around the x variable based on our ggplot arguments later on. So the y variable is that we want to reorder the gear by the median value. So right down there, you can see uh, Ellis's table. Um, right now, it's not ordered by the actual um, median value, right? So it goes actually the lowest, then uh, uh, gear four has the highest, and then and then gear five is, is actually somewhere in the middle of the two. So we wanna make sure that we order it by that so that it's visually appealing to the eye. And then we're gonna add in this thing called a geo line mm -hmm. range, which is basically going to plot a straight line from an X min and an X max. And in our case, we're going to be plotting the interquartile range. So we're going to plot the low, the 25th percentile and the high, the, uh, the 75th percentile. We're going to plot that there and then we're going to make it size 10. So this is going to be a fat, thick line. We want to make this nice and thick so that it actually looks kind of like a, a, uh, Basically, like if you were looking at a box plot, it looks like the quantiles of a box plot is what we're going to do here. We're going to color it gray, and we're going to use alpha equals 0.5, so it's going to be this uh, little bit, a little bit clear, a little bit see-through. And we're going to do that because on top of that, we want to sit 
this geome point of the median. So we want the middle value, the median value, the 50th percentile value to be plotted on top of this uh, interquartile range. We're gonna color it orange so that it sticks out from the gray background. And we're gonna set the size to five because we want it to be nice and big within that size 10 interquartile range. So that's, that's what we have there. And then what we're gonna do next is we wanna just label this so that people know what they're looking at. So we're gonna use geome curve and geome curve is gonna create this sort of like cool curved line that points directly at whatever it is we want to talk about. So in this case, we're gonna set an X variable and an X end. So basically where it starts and finishes. So this would, you could think about the line going from 22.5 backwards to 19.8. And then we need a Y variable. So the line is going to go down from 2.7 to 2.1. And we're going to have it point an arrow with a length of uh, uh, length equals to the unit uh, 0.3 centimeters, right? And the curvature means that we don't want the line to go straight and down. We're going to have it sort of go on an arc. On a and so we're going to put this. Yeah, exactly. We're going to put this little arc to it. And we're going to annotate right in front of that line exactly what is in this plot, which is the median RPG. So we're going to use annotate function. We're going to pass it this geome text. We're going to say this is where we want to put this. And, and that text we're going to label median. And then this backslash n MPG, just make sure that we get two lines. So it's going to say median, second line, MPG. Yeah, let me run this all so that people yeah, can see what we're talking look. about. There you hey, go. There we go. So now we got our, our uh, yep, so we got our little curved line there. We know what we're, what the orange dot stands for. And now we just have a little bit of, um, a little bit of theming to do to make it kind of look nice. We're gonna throw some uh, labels on there. So the caption is gonna be called figure one. If you needed to refer to this within your, uh, uh, within your paper, you're gonna say figure one and it's median MPG by car gears. The X uh, is irrelevant at this point because we've labeled the figure and we've also actually labeled directly on the plot with our curved line. So we're just gonna set that to null. And then Y we're gonna set to, those are our three factors of, of uh, gears for the cars, three, four, and five. And then our theming, we're going to uh, access text. Uh, the element text here, we're gonna set to 13 and we're gonna bold. So this is gonna be the, the bold of the, the X and Y axes, the plot caption, um, which is which is the uh, you know figure one median MPG. We're going to set it all the way over to the left, like we did with our table and uh, our, our table label, and we're going to set it to be a little bit larger than the size of the x and y axis. Uh, the V just is just to move it a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And then we're going to set the face to bold, and then similarly because we have a y axis label. We're going to set that size to 13 face bold, and then V just just gets it away from the number. Sometimes the Y axis can be so close to the numbers that it like, I, I hate looking at it. So I, tr I just try and nudge it. I just nudge it just a little bit off. And then uh, an axis line element line is just the, uh, the lines behind the theme. So we'll go ahead and run it. And now we have a cool little plot here that gives us the median MPG by car gears, three, four, and five. We can see the interquartile range, which we actually could have labeled within our uh, a label of the plot. Um, we see the median is the orange. We see the interquartile range. We can also see that some of these are a little bit skewed. For example, in uh, gear three or in gear four, you could see that uh, all of the medians are kind of to the left of the interquartile range, which probably tells us that there's some right tail to these types of um, uh, to the MPG relative to the car gears where it's, it's right tailed. So there's a few outliers on the right uh, that are dragging that distribution up there, but the median value is somewhere back to the left of the distribution. Uh, and that's a little bit about kind of plotting for, for research purposes. Yep. There you go. So uh, if you like what you did or like what we did and you like uh, what we saw here, please subscribe, please comment down below. Let us know if there's any other questions you have or any other things you'd like to see us uh, produced uh, around research quality, uh, publication type stuff. Um, and with that, I think we're going to call it. So as always, my name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. I am on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. And we are both on Twitter at tidy underscore explained. Tidy.explained at gmail.com is where you can reach our mailbag as uh, this, this one, uh, this, this episode came from. 
You can hit us up on the actual uh, GitHub repo, open up an issue if you'd like, or you can feel free to like, subscribe on the YouTube channel, drop a comment in, and, uh, and we'll get back to you there. And again, if you like what we're doing and you want to buy us a beer or coffee, we will not be opposed to that. And uh, you can hit us up on our Patreon page, which you can get to through the YouTube channel. It's yep. always in the uh, comment section there. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much. And keep on exploring your world.